Why did I spend nine grand a year for this? Psychometric test. I've already gone to uni. I don't need you testing me on my knowledge, okay? I don't care what time a bus is gonna leave someplace and then arrive at another place, okay? We got Google for that. Hey guys, it's me again, Anushka. Hope you're all doing really well. So, this has been a long awaited video and I'm finally sitting down to do it. I feel like I've asked you guys to ask me questions about this three or four times on my stories because Instagram keeps deleting your submissions and it's so annoying and I forget to screenshot them so it's kind of my fault as well. Don't forget, if you do find this video helpful, make sure to hit that like button so that it can reach many other people out there. And subscribe as well if you haven't already so you don't miss any of my videos. The whole process of getting a grad job can be really stressful at times. I get it, guys. I remember when I was looking for jobs, it's hectic. Like That phase between when you graduate and looking for a job is so weird because you're just like, oh my god, what am I going to do with my life? I can't find anything. Why did I go to uni? Why did I spend nine grand a year for this? Just a bit of background on me. I went to uni for economics and accounting. I passed with a 2-1. Um, you guys have been with me throughout that whole journey throughout uni, it's insane. And now I'm working in a corporate investment bank as a counterparty risk analyst. I'm still junior, but I've been working there for like over two years now. Honestly, I've been learning so much on the job. Every day I learn something new. I learn how to communicate with people, with certain people, with certain departments. It does make your mind work, you know? I actually do really like the side of my job because I don't really work on like the market side. I work more on like loans and stuff, which I enjoy it much better. Basically, we perform controls to make sure everything is in line, everything's working properly. That's the kind of a, a vague summary of what I do. My bank actually didn't have a proper graduate scheme though. I, I got in through an internship which lasted for six months and then someone left and I, they were really happy with the work I was doing and I was signed on early and into a permanent role. So it's definitely a bit different than a graduate scheme where you rotate between departments and you do like a set amount of years. I think usually it's three years. So if that's what you're looking for, I can't really speak on that because I haven't been in on, on such a graduate scheme where you rotate and get to experience different departments. Like that's not what I've done. But this video is mostly focused on the what you have to do to kind of get yourself in like the job hunt process and what can help during uni interviews and just securing that job basically. The first thing that you're gonna need is a CV. Even before finishing your third year, get a CV. Get a CV guys. Before I started looking for jobs, my, my CV was appalling. It was so basic. I think people overcomplicate and make such a big deal out of CVs when it doesn't really need to be like that guys. Yes, my CV was appalling and it was so basic. But I showed it to my friend, my friend was like, what the hell is this bullshit? <laughs> and then she helped me out because she went to a careers advisor at uni. So I'm lucky to have such good friends, you know. If you're at uni, you should have a careers advisor. And don't be afraid to go to them because they can be a massive help. They'll help you out with your CV if you have any questions on anything work related. Definitely go to them and don't be afraid. And you can ask them anything. They're there to help you. That's their job. If you do want to do it yourself, there's loads of templates online. You just need a brief summary of yourself, a list of work history, your education history. And in your work history, make sure to write for each position what you did and what skills you earned from what you did in that job if that makes sense so based for example for example i worked at bobby brown i would say that i improved i gained good people skills because i had to deal with customers on a daily basis don't just say oh i had to help customers link it to a skill that you gained from that experience right so customers people skills counting cash attention to detail if you worked in like an office internship which is amazing then sorting out documents helps you gain administrative skills do you get me like just things like that really don't just be really vague make it quick but be specific with what you put in your cv because i don't think employees want to see a long ass cv like they just don't want to do that and i've seen some people in my office look at cvs while they're hiring, hiring people i feel like most of the times they go straight to hobbies to see what they what they like to do um but it's interesting to see they just want a quick summary of what you've done what education you have and what experience you have you know cvs don't need to be hard okay be honest don't lie guys don't lie so yeah i will try and link some templates in the info box for you guys now once you've got a good cv you need to go to the next bit and write a cover letter so for me when i was looking for jobs i had one standard cover letter where i 
gave I went more into depth into what I did at uni um anything that I felt like I needed to point it out point out in my like throughout my life so basically moving around in countries a lot being able to speak English and French that's uh, like understanding different cultures and being able to speak with people just go into more depth with these details that you've highlighted in your CV. I know I, I also uh, talked a lot about my dissertation in my cover letter and how it could um, relate to the job I was applying for. If you're applying to an analyst job then maybe you can say that your dissertation gave you analytical skills because you had to analyse large amounts of data to perform your analysis in your dissertation. Something like that. I'm being very vague here but just to give you an idea. And I had a standard cover letter and every job that I applied for, I kind of tweaked it for like the position I was applying applying for. Um, and yeah, that definitely helps. And again, there's so many examples online. If you don't know what, how, like the structure of it and like what you're supposed to be putting in it, then there's so much online and that's what really helped me. And again, I'll try and put some links in the info box to help you guys out. Now we're gonna go into the searching process, which is a pain in the butt. When I'm telling you guys, I would apply to like 15 to 20 jobs a day. Like I was nonstop. I could not deal with the fact that I was not employed because since I was in uni, since I did my A-levels, I've been working part-time, so I've been gaining income. And to go from some income to zero, put me into full panic mode. And like, for me, I needed a job ASAP, right? So I was applying like crazy. I was, there was not one day where I was not applying to jobs. So, and to be honest, it's a big help. It doesn't make a difference for sure. There were a few websites that I really liked. For example, Indeed, Read, and I would also go into um, like independent websites for specific companies or banks, right? Indeed, it was by far my favorite one. It's really easy to apply. And I actually got a lot of callbacks through Indeed, like through the jobs that I was applying through Indeed. I also had my notifications on so that I was keeping an eye on the new uh, listed jobs on the website. So if there was something I was interested in, bang, I would go apply straight away. And yeah, just keep a close eye guys. And if you don't meet all the requirements that the job states, that don't matter, okay? I read in some book, I think it was in Patricia Bright's book, there's a certain percentage of men. I think it's like a high percentage of men actually apply to jobs where they don't meet all the requirements compared to women. I'm here and I'm gonna tell you, if you only meet one of the requirements, it don't matter. You can learn the skills. Say you're a quick learner, you could you do everything you're gonna learn, you're gonna do Skillshare that I always work with um, to learn certain things. I don't know, just do it. Cause you can learn these, you can learn the other requirements unless they're very specific and very complex. Like you need to, uh, to know like Python, you know? If I saw stuff like you, uh, like a requirement was Python or like computer science based stuff, I would not apply because that's very technical and I know I wouldn't be able to learn that. It's a whole language. It's a whole language I cannot learn. So you need to be realistic. I would apply to jobs where it says a year experience in this role. Like I didn't have experience and I still would apply and I still got callbacks. So like I said, just apply, just apply to them and you just never know. And let's say you manage to get to the interview phase and they're like, do you have this requirement, like a year's experience in this job role? Just be honest and say, I don't, but I uh, have experience in this other role that I feel have required the same skill set and I gain these skills from this job. They're not the same, but do you know what I mean? Like, improvise. Recruitment agencies are really, really good. They're, he they're there to help you, but you have to remember that they get a commission when you get a job. So they're gonna push you like hell and they're kind of a hassle because I would get so many calls from them and they would also like propose jobs that are a bit irrelevant. So one job that I got through a recruitment agency was a uh, vacuum cleaning sales job. I think the salary was like 28K a year and I had to go do training in the US and that was offered to me and I declined it because it was just so irrelevant. Like I did the interview and everything. They were lovely. Like the lady really loved me and she was so nice. Like I definitely saw myself working with her, but like in the longer run, I just didn't see myself in that role, but was the whole process experience? Yes. So I'm glad I went through it. No, I didn't accept the job. You're allowed to turn down jobs, guys. You don't have to take whatever you get first. Be mindful of what you want to do. Like think about, is this a job that I really want to do, right? In the longer run. 
Like, where is it going to bring me in five years' time? So, yeah, there was a few interviews that I went to that I kind of knew, like... I was, I was kind of iffy, but I still did it just for the experience of speaking to people, getting asked questions, going through the interview process, because um, it really did help a, a lot. So, after... Um, I think I got two or three job offers bef before I accepted the one I, I am doing now, my job now. And I declined all of them and it was very, very hard. I'm not gonna lie guys, they all had good salaries and I was just like, right, this is my life. Like if I'm gonna do something, I need to like it to a certain amount. It's got to be relevant to what I did at uni. Like a lot of them was, um, it's like top level sales jobs, which I didn't really wanna do. Another one was a kind of like a part-time accounting job, which I kind of saw myself in and I was really hesitating to do that one, but it was part-time and I didn't like the area that it was in as well. It was kind of far, although my job today is far. <laughs> yeah, and then I think it overlapped with my job offer now and it just, this job was, I saw many more benefits with the role I have now than the, the other one that was offered to me. If you're going through your recruitment process and you're offered a job and you're not like, wow, like I need to take this, and you're a bit doubtful, give it a good thing. Don't just say yes to the first offer you get because you might regret it later on. You might ask yourself, oh, why didn't I just keep applying and see what else is out there? Like, I know, I know, like, and it also depends on your situation. If you need a job, if you need the money, yeah, take it. But if you feel like you can wait a bit and still apply, then give it some time. Like, you don't have to reply to them straight away. You can say, can I get back to you in like a week's time, blah, blah, blah. Oh yeah, you are in control too. And you need to make sure that you like the company, you like the people that interviewed you. It's not all about them liking you, you have to like them as well. So I did actually apply to PwC. Um, I'm not gonna lie, all the big four companies were so hard to get into. And they have bloody hard psychometric tests. Psychometric tests. We all hate them, let's admit it. I've already gone to uni, I don't need you testing me on my knowledge, okay? It's an insult. <laughs> Some psychometric tests are easier than others. I think the worst one I did was for one of the big fours. I spent five hours doing it. Five hours, it was a joke. And it's my fault because I didn't properly prepare for it. So for me, logical tests like are, are okay. Like I found them easy. Once you get, once you understand them, you'll fly through them easily. English tests are, are really not that bad. When I say English, it's like you have to read like a case study and then they'll give you like certain, the, not case study, but they'll give you like certain situations that you have to read through and then like what would your reaction be to it or like what would be the best option or what would be the least best option on how to react to the situation. So those ones are okay as well. It's the maths. And yes, your girl has done maths. One of my modules at uni was maths. And I struggled with the maths, guys. And it's basic maths too. So don't, if you feel like, oh my God, I feel dumb. Like, what is this? I've gone to uni and I can't do this bloody test. You're not alone. You are not alone, okay? I've spoken to my friends and they struggle with these too. And what is going to help you is practice. Now, you're going to have to go on BBC Bite Size. Go over all your basic maths knowledge, like ratios, percentages, Remember how to calculate an area, perimeter. I know guys, don't ask me why. But I had my sister with one and I couldn't calculate the area. And I was so embarrassed, like I was so disappointed in myself. But mostly, the ones I've seen the most is like time questions, date questions. Oh my God, I hate the time questions. Like I don't care what time a bus is gonna leave someplace and then arrive at another place, okay? We got Google for that, at Google Maps. Learn your profit and loss basics as well, because I found that came up a lot, like turnover, etc., revenues, like that kind of language. Um, I think this is more relevant to like financy related jobs, you know. So graduatemonkey.com is really, really good. Um, Grad Bootcamp is another website that has uh, psychometric tests that are very, very similar to PwC. So the tip here is really look at who supplies the psychometric tests for the company where you are applying for. When I applied for PwC, I looked who was supplying a psychometric test, it's like a company. Then I would look at, exam I would see what websites are providing like practice questions that are provided by the same test provider. 
and I would pay for these practice questions and I would do them and they're basically the same questions that would come into the come in the psychometric test so I would do them over and over and over again I think I would pay like five to ten pounds for them I've even told my sister to do this graduate monkey and grad boots cam really helped me although I don't know if graduate Mon monkey exists anymore but I will link some in the info box if I find any good ones but if you want to do the research yourself I would say check who provides the test and then look on Google like if you can pay for like practice ones from that provider and yeah the rest of it is just practice 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 like do them every single day 50 times 50 to 100 times a day just do it some people actually get other people to do their tests for them but you're going to be caught out on your own lie because they're going to ask you in assessment days to go do the test so make sure to do it like try and do it yourself like the practice is what's going to make the difference here guys you can also pay for practice uh tests for the logical and the english ones as well like there's so much out there online guys so just if you didn't know this now you know and what i do like is that if you practice them they're exactly the same questions are on that are on the actual test themselves so it's a massive help so if you so once you've passed your psychometric test you might be invited to an assessment day you might not you might just get invited to an interview but a lot of graduate schemes will have assessment days let me just share my experience with my assessment day at PwC. Do you know, it was so, I walked in there and I felt like I was in a film. I was like, wow, wow. Yeah, we all sat down and then you get introduced to this person that manages the whole day. And there's like a bunch of other applicants. And then you get to know them. I was like chatting to them all, asking them what they studied, what job they applied for and so on. And then you go in I forgot the structure of it. I think one was like a group exercise where you have to discuss what, you have to discuss a case study basically. And I found that very hard. I don't know if these people are robots. Can I just say something? I feel like you get very, very smart people that can read like a whole line in a book and get it straight away. And then you get, you have smart people that maybe have to read that page five times over to understand it but you know they get it in the end well I'm that person where I have to read the phrase five times before I get it okay and then you have these people that barely read the case study and they're already discussing it while I'm here still trying to read it and understand and comprehend it and they're already discussing it like I was so lost guys if I went to other assessment days that's something definitely that I would have practiced like discussing case studies how to like pinpoint the main uh points in the case study to discuss about because I think you have to discuss a certain thing you then have to do the psychometric test again which I think I flopped actually on that one <laughs> and then I was I was just so nervous that day guys and then I f there was something else but I don't even remember but throughout the whole day there's someone observing you so yeah I remember I was so disappointed when I got rejected for that um, but I feel like I could have prepared more for that assessment day and I didn't so I would say prepare for everything, practice, practice your psychometric test, practice case studies, look into, do research into what a certain company's assessment days look like, like what the structure of it is and what they're going to be discussing, because there's a lot of forums on Google that, where people discuss their experience, so you can definitely take from that and know what things to uh, practice on. I would definitely say practice your family presenting you might get asked to present do a lot of case studies practice 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 meditate before you go in i don't know like listen to calming music to calm your nerves down breathe like learn how, learn how to breathe when you talk because when i'm presenting i forget to breathe so that i always run out of breath like these are just simple exercises that you can do to help yourself through these days because they're not easy okay and some people um, are much better than others, like it, it, that's fine. But if you're like me, where you feel like you need to put that extra work to get to that level, then do it. Like you just have to do it, right? And if it doesn't work out, it's fine. Just move on to the next opportunity. Keep applying. There's so much out there, okay? I know we're in the middle of a pandemic, but I know people are still recruiting because I know my company is and my friends have found a job for a pandemic, so it is possible. It's gonna be harder, yes, but it's possible. So the next thing you're gonna move on to are interviews. I would say look at a bunch of example interview questions, interview, interview questions for the specific role you're applying to, write them down, practice what you're gonna to answer to them, 
um, look into the company, look at their core principles, their values, because they might ask you. Um, if, if they ask you, why did you choose to work for this company? I really like your values, you know, like you're all you're all about diversity and inclusivity. Another thing I did was look at Glassdoor. I would look at whether I would actually like the company. So I would look at salaries and reviews of like the the work culture there and how it is working in the company and like the teams and blah blah blah. Like it kind of it's like Glassdoor is like a review website for the company itself. This is just like preparation you can do prior to the interview. Practice so much. Practice actually talking with like family members or friends or like in front of a lot of people because sometimes there will probably be like more than one person interviewing you. So that can be a little bit daunting at times. I kid you not, in one of my interviews, someone asked me like, so what was your dissertation about? Like, what was the, the conclusion? I was like, mmm literally could not remember uh so what i said is i didn't say i don't know but i said i'm sorry i can't remember at this moment in time but i will have to like get back to you and check on it because it's been a while now since i did it awful i know but i still got the job alfred okay do you know what i actually know someone in my family who said i don't know in an interview and they still got the job sometimes people appreciate honesty it's just how you how you go about it obviously you don't want to sit there and say i don't know to everything if there's genuinely if there's genuinely an answer you don't know just say i don't know i'm sorry i might need to look into this i don't have that i don't have that information right now but i can get back to you just things like that right now in the interview itself make sure to dress smart wear natural makeup okay no glitter just you just gotta be neutral have a pen and paper ready just in case always have a question in your mind ready if they say at, at the end of the interview do you have any questions ask a question i don't care what you're gonna ask them but ask them a question don't just say no because when you asking them a question just shows that you're genuinely interested in the company the role itself you can ask do they have any training opportunities or for people who applied to this role previously where have they found themselves five years later you also want to maintain eye contact now don't be a creep okay don't just be like be confident put your shoulders back sit up straight sit at the back of your chair like i find that when i sit up straight and the back support is behind me i just feel relaxed speak loud clear and concisely and yeah just be yourself guys be yourself don't pre don't pretend to be something else just be yourself and you will be fine make sure to go over your dissertation your cover letter and your cv make sure to know all of that off by heart and if you need a copy print out a copy and have it all in front of you just in case they're not gonna mind that but it would be even better if you knew your cv and cover letter inside out so that if you do get any questions asked you know you know the question okay and definitely make a full list of example interview questions and prepare your answers to them so and memorize them okay memorize but to be honest if there's a question that you haven't practiced pause a second give it some thought and then answer you don't have to instantly answer if you haven't prepared to it it's fine they Think about what you're going to say. You're allowed to do that. You're not a robot, right? Now, think extra things that can help you is experience. So if you're still at uni, I urge you guys to get experience. Like, even if it's not paid, get it. If you've done a week in an office somewhere that's relevant to a job that you want to apply to in the future, that will be amazing on a CV. I didn't do any of that. And I kind of regretted it when I was applying to jobs. But I was lucky that I still got job offers because I was doing YouTube and everything. I had part time jobs and I could relate that to skills that were needed in jobs that I was applying for. But some people don't have experience in any job whatsoever. They just go to school and start applying for jobs. And that can be very, very difficult. Volunteer, um, do free internships just to get that experience in that you can put it in that CV. And also it will help you just in with yourself like in future jobs you know one thing i also didn't have was linkedin i know my friends talk about it a lot it can help you network and it will probably help you open doors with i don't know certain companies i don't know how it works but linkedin i feel like i've heard the phrase where like if you're gonna apply for jobs have linkedin i didn't <laughs> But yeah, my sister has it and she uses it. So yeah, it can be beneficial as well. So yeah, I think that's everything guys. If I, I don't, I've tried to plan this out. Like I've literally wrote notes for you lot, okay? Notes. If there's any questions at all, I will be on top of the comment section in this video because I know 
if you need any help just let me know in the comments below and I'll reply to you I'll do my best I definitely recommend Skillshare I have worked with them in the past um, I'll put ad here because I've worked with them and I don't want no problems in the in the future um, this video is not sponsored by them but they, def they definitely have very resourceful um, videos on there which you can probably put in your CV and add it as experience so I'll leave my link which will give you a free trial to the website. I'm gonna answer some of your questions. I screenshotted these ages ago. What did you get for your GCSE and A levels and when did you know what you wanted to do? I never really knew what I wanted to do. I wanted to be a doctor, then I wanted to be a vet, then I decided to uh, go into like the financial world although I really didn't know what exactly but that's why I did economics and accounts because okay I, I felt like that gave me a bit of everything because I did my GCSEs equivalent in France I had to redo my GCSEs and A levels at the same time when I was in the UK so I ended up and I ended up doing GCSE maths and English and an IGCSE in science um I got B B and A I think in those but I got BB in maths and English. I was doing them along with my A-levels, which was really difficult, but I spent three years doing my A-levels. And in my A-levels, I did French, biology, and maths. And I think I got French A star. Biology, I got a B. And maths, I got a D. I was working part-time and doing YouTube, so my I can't say my full focus was on, on education. It wasn't. If I if I was solely doing my education, then yes, I would have definitely put more time and work into it. But I, I think I did okay with, with everything else I had to deal with at the time, you know? To be honest, let's be honest, a grade D in maths and A-levels is not a good one. Most jobs ask for AAA, ABB, ABC, but when it goes to D, like... But your girl still got a job like the next question is i have bad a level grades and worried about this affecting my job search any advice well i would just say apply anyways like you just never know because i don't think a b i don't think my d was a great grade either but i still secured job offers and a job so if you can still do it like i would say that if you know that your grades are not that great try to secure experience so that you can have that to back yourself, you know? How long did it take to find your grad job? It's taking me years, love you so much. I love you too, thank you so much. Um, I graduated in July and then I found a job, I got a job offer in September. That's because your girl was applying like crazy, I'm telling you. But it's taking years, I know someone that has been unemployed for around two years and found a really, really good grad job in a during a pandemic so it like I said it's possible don't give up just keep applying and in the meantime I would definitely say try to do uh, uh, certain jobs for free like uh, one or two week uh, intern jobs or summer intern jobs even if they're not paid just do it so that you can get the experience and when you just don't look like you've done nothing during that period of time there's so many questions on here and i can't like do it all in one video so i might do another one in the future but i'm gonna do my best guys how did you find your grad job my, my grad job was actually in indeed so that's why like i love indeed because a lot of my job offers came from there and it's the most basic job website out there i feel like how did you choose which role to choose within investment banking honestly i didn't there's so much out there I also know someone that's done a law degree but works in compliance and financial security like it's just you you need to do your research and see how like you can use your degree and your skills and experience in the roles and like look at the job descriptions what they what do they ask you to do like video call interview tips and advice I hate video calls especially during working up from home we have to do more video calls and I'm not gonna lie, you girl is in PJs most of the time, okay? I'm not one of those productive people that get up at 5 a.m. and get dressed and put makeup on just to be at home. Like, I'm gonna be in PJs. It's just the camera. It's not, it's not any different than you being in front of the person, right? So just be yourself. Make sure no one makes any noise in the house. Make sure no one comes into the camera view. Make sure there's no distractions. Turn phones off. Um, I was speaking to one of my friends and she was telling me the story, literally, I was laughing my head off. She was in a video interview in the morning and her mum opens the, like the door was in the background and her mum walks into her room like woken up, hair messy and everything, just standing at the door. 
and the guy she told me the guy stopped talking and then like she didn't know what to do and her mom's just randomly standing in the background and he could see it like she said it was so awkward but i found it so funny but just make sure these things don't happen okay <laughs> prepare as you would for a normal interview and be yourself it's not it's 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 not as hard as it should be like i know it can be nerve-wracking but breathe meditate how did you build your technical knowledge to work in an investment bank i had a bit of background knowledge from uni because we did economics and accounting we looked at p l's we looked at financial statements so i had a bit of that knowledge although i'm not gonna lie i don't remember most of it but in my job role a lot of things come up and they ring a bell and i'm not gonna lie i've been in the job for two years and i still learn every day my team knows I st i'm still learning they help me people are there to help you they're not there to bring you down you can ask questions if you need to you're gonna make mistakes it's normal you're learning so yeah i, I, I just try to pinpoint certain things that I learned in my degree that I could relate to the job that I was applying for um, and then the rest you'll just learn on the job most of the people that I work with the senior people that I work with haven't been to uni I need water I've been talking for way too long do you feel your grad job actually made your degree worth it yeah definitely like if I didn't have my degree I would not be where I am today Best or worst interview or application experiences? One where we literally spent like ages, me and the interview person talking about like our life experiences, like where we've been, where we've traveled and like, it was just a casual conversation and it was actually a very pleasant conversation. I just wish all interviews could be like that, but that's just not the case. So that was definitely one that I remember as a pleasant like experience. Now the worst one was when I went to one, I knew, I remember this so, clearly guys it was so bad like it was for a finance job i think it was for i don't know what the role was for anymore but it was literally just next to the shard it was like this fast-paced office job like very it was very like it, it was kind of like a new work, work culture everyone was young and everything anyways two guys are interviewing me they're quite young and he looks at my cv and he's like you do youtube you say you do makeup on youtube you, you work at Bobby, you worked at Bobby Brown part time, you worked at Boots, there's a lot of beauty related stuff on here, so why are you applying to work in finance? I didn't know what to say, but I think I said oh, I just really like it, I, I still enjoy it and like a lot of my family members are in that kind of area, anything that came to my mind I was just saying it like I didn't care at that point because it was really degrading the way he said that to me, it was so frustrating guys. At that point I knew I didn't want to work with a nurse like that. In that instance, I, I should have known that like, I didn't want, I knew I wouldn't, I wouldn't have accepted anything from them if I was offered a job, but I shouldn't have told him like, people can have more than one hobby, right? It doesn't mean because like, I have just beauty related stuff in here, I can't work in a finance related job. Like, it's just ridiculous. If the person is willing to show enthusiasm and like the hunger to work in that area and has done a whole degree in it, then what are you talking about? And plus, like, my personal situation didn't... I couldn't work. I couldn't get the experience because I physically had no time from, like, working part-time so I was able to support myself and my family. So, yeah, you don't know what someone is going through, why they have the journey they had. I mean, if you're working for top-tier... If you're applying to top-tier places, I'm going to say right now most of them won't care. Like, they just want to see the experience there the relevant experience but some places don't so it really depends i have a two-year gap in my cv straight after grad school how can i justify that thank you unless you have the proof there to justify that you were doing something if you were applying to jobs to say that you genuinely had a difficult time applying having any luck with jobs but also um, if you are in that situation where you find yourself that it's been a while since you haven't found a job try and get internships for free uh, experiences like where they're not paid just do it just do anything to get that experience so that you can say oh, right I did this this and this to help along the way or do like courses online or something like something that you can do that can help you towards the job that you're applying for do you feel like you're judged being on YouTube and also working at a bank <sighs> honestly I I had it in my CV and I was lucky the people that was interviewing me were actually quite intrigued and interested in it but um, I can't say that everyone's open-minded to it, especially the more senior people, because they just don't get it. Like, they just see it as, like, this self-centered kind of thing. Just, like, 
doing makeup, being on camera, taking selfies, they just don't get it. I remember I spoke to someone and he didn't get it. Like he 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 he, he just he just found it really weird. But then I also have other people that are really like genuinely interested in it and they ask me questions. Now I don't like talking about it in that environment. I just don't. They people I'd rather just do my own thing and not now that I have the I have a job, I don't feel the need that I need to talk about what I do on the side. Um so yeah, I kind of avoid the conversation and it's sad that it has to come to that, but not everyone's going to understand what you're doing, but that's okay, just do you, do your thing, do your side hustle. And you don't have to explain yourself to everyone. And yeah, I get judged because they don't get the concept. It's very different. But do I still work extra hours at work in my actual job? Yes, I do. I put so much work into it. I do late hours sometimes, like max eight or nine. I don't do these crazy hours till like midnight, guys, but... If I need to do, if I've got work to be done, I'm gonna make sure that work's done and I'll do the extra hours and I'm not paid for that. So I make sure I, I do, I, I, I do my best in my role. Like I never take my job for granted. So my YouTube, my side hustle and my, all the YouTube stuff does not affect my performance at work. Like I, if anything, I always try to put that first. Even though YouTube is really important, my job as well is quite important, so. It's just finding that balance, but I always make sure my tasks, <coughs> I can't speak anymore. I always make sure that my tasks in my main full-time job are done before I start focusing on anything else. Okay guys, I'm gonna end the video here. I really hope you found this video helpful. If you want another Q&A just related to like this, like an actual Q&A video, um, let me know in the comments below and because I haven't answered I, I feel like there's so much guys. I took screenshots here There's so much that I can't answer all of that. Yeah, I hope you found this video helpful and um, give it a big thumbs up and Yeah, good luck guys with all your job search. You can do this. You got this trust the process we are in the middle of a pandemic, but There's so much still open out there for you guys so don't give up okay i know these are very 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 hard times i hope this video gives you a little bit of a motivation a bit of that push and just apply like crazy apply even if it's not relevant to what you want to do for now because we're in a pandemic still apply to it if you get the job do it get that experience and then you can think about changing later on anyways i'm gonna stop blabbering my throat hurts i love you guys so much and i will see you in my next video bye